Hey, Sammy? Shut up. What'd I tell you about using names? Yeah, that's right. Sorry, Sammy. One more Sammy out of you and I'll blow that rock head off. Don't get mad. Oh, don't get mad. Knock it off. He's coming around. Now, remember, I'm gonna do all the talking. All right, Bonner, take your hand down. You might make me nervous. Give me a drink of water. Whew. Some whiff you gave me. Yeah, that chloroform works nice and quiet like, don't it? The only noise it makes is up here. All right, what's the pitch? The pitch is you're making a trip on it. Nice long trip. All expenses paid. Sounds interesting. Where? To Mexico. Over there on the table is your ticket. And your plane leaves tomorrow. And there's a hundred bucks in that envelope. A hundred bucks wouldn't keep me in enchiladas in Mexico, Chico. Right. But when you get down there, you get the rest of it. Two G's a month. For 12 months. From whom? From whom? From us. We got a representative down there. You mean you chloroform me to get me to take a job of two grand a month? To do what? To stay out the country. Is that all? Right. The boss wants you out and he's willing to pay for it. Now, if it was up to me... You could do it with one slug, huh? Right. And if I don't go? Well, fine by me, copper. I'll be able to spend that slug. Anything else I should know? Yeah. Don't try and follow us. And don't be a wise guy. Just sit there and sleep that headache off. And tomorrow you'll be dancing to rumba. If you're smart. Let's go. Here's your luggage. What's said to tell you you worked last night getting them all saddle soaked and initialed? I didn't order any luggage. Oh, don't kid me, Mr. Barnett. The instructions said to have them here this morning because you're leaving on an afternoon plane. Here, look. Looks like my luggage, all right. Sure it is. MB. Mike Barnett. You just sign here, Mr. Barnett. Right. Yeah, just a minute. Come to show the apartment, Mr. Barnett. Show the apartment? What are you talking about? Well, Miss LeClerc here. She wants a subletter from you. Well, she looks as if she'd make a nice tenant, but I'm not going anywhere. Not going anywhere? No, said you'd be gone a year. Could I get a tenant? And bright and early this morning, Miss LeClerc came along and, well... Well, obviously there's been a mistake, Mr. Lensley. Uh, tell you what, Mr. Barnett, I'll leave you my address and, uh, in case you change your mind... It'd be a pleasure to call you, Miss LeClerc. But, sir, I don't understand that. I'm sorry, sir. Goodbye, sir.
Yes? Miss LeClerc? Who? LeClerc. I think she just came in here. Tall, blonde, very attractive. Oh, you mean Miss Mary Bassett. Well, maybe so. I'm very bad on names. You. Surprise. I've changed my mind. But I just saw you leave. No, I saw you leave. Then you're not going to Mexico. Oh, but I am. That's what I came to see you about. You can have the apartment. Get out of here. <laughs> not before I find out what this is all about. Oh, all right then. Come on inside. Listen, I tried to warn you. Why? I can't tell you now. Who are you, LeClerc? Bassett? What's your angle around here? You must leave here. Please, Barnett. Take it easy, honey. It's my funeral. Now start talking. Okay, then. I'll make it short. I'm from Minnesota. So? I came to the big city to get ahead. So I took a secretarial job. And then another. And another. But I had one trouble. Dictation? No. Wrong guys have offices and secretaries, too. Before I knew it, I was in pretty deep. Big money. Easy work. Not very honest work. I still don't get it. Well, a couple of months ago, I got a new job and a new boss. And that's where you came in. Me? How? My boss wants you dead. <laughs> well, in my business, that's a certain distinction. Well, it's not in mine. Murder's just a little more than I can stomach. Racketeering's one thing, but cold-blooded killing's another. So you warned me. Well, now for the big question. Who's your boss? He's here. You've got to get out of here. Quick, the back way. Mary. Well, Albert Tansy, what are you doing here? I've been living here the last couple of months. You know where I was before that. Yeah. You must have been a pretty good boy up there to get out so soon. Soon? You call five years soon? I thought of you a lot up there. You did, huh? Let's see you so shooting the breeze. You won, I lost. How about a drink? Nothing for me, thanks. Well, what gives? You in training? You look as if you could use a drink, Mary. Uh, I'm very tired, Mr. Tenzi. I think I'll be heading for home. Stick around. I got a couple of letters I want you to write. I didn't know you knew the Seamus here, Mary. Oh, why, uh, yes, Yeah, sir. we're old friends. We went to dancing school together. You should see us rumba. That's nice. I'll get it. I told the mate you can knock off for the rest of the day. Hello. Sammy? So Barnett's on the plane, huh? You want to know where he is right now? He's here. Now, don't give me no chatter. Just tighten your teeth and listen. Where are you? Across the street at the bar. Well, get that ape Stanley over here right now. Yeah. I'll tell you what I want you to do. You wouldn't listen, and now we're both in it together. He won't do anything to you. I thought you knew Tansy. Everybody happy? How about one for the road, Barnett? I can take a hit, Tansy. I'm leaving, but I never drink on the job. You want a case? Yeah. I'll tell you about it sometime. Goodbye, Mary. Don't worry about a thing. Can you find your way out of here? Sure. I can find my way back, too. Off of you. Shut up. There's some supper for you. Pretty good. I had some too. I thought your supper was a banana from the top of a tree. I don't like that. Now get off, Stanley. Why, you big lug, I ought to get out of here. You know, Barnett, Stanley don't like you very much. Dinner okay? Fine, we'll leave a tip under the tray. Hey, this monkey is still pretty wise, boss. Maybe I ought to... No. 
I don't want the rug should get dirty. Should have made that trip, Barnett. Would have saved a lot of trouble for everybody. You mean for you, don't you? It would have been a lot less complicated to have me knifed in Mexico. How long did it take you to dream up that idea? Five years. All the time I was up the river, I kept figuring, if I don't do nothing else, I'm going to get the guy that sent me up here. But he's smart. I got to be smarter. So where do we go now, the Belgian Congo? We're going to take a little boat ride about three miles out. You I feel sorry about, Mary. You shouldn't have brought it in. But now we got to take you along. Right on your feet, Barnett. Let's get out of here. Where are we going? You'll see, sister. You'll see. Let's go. <laughs> Where you sleep, pretty boy. I think I'll sit up for a while. Will you ask the boy to put up my deck chair? Get in there. Stanley, you're the jailer now. Gee, thanks. Sit there and don't move.
Barnett, what you doing in there? Hey, Barnett. You're going to answer me, or I have to come in there? was you. Believe me, Stanley, I didn't know. Stanley.
got your message. What's this junk it all about, anyhow? Supposed to be a one-way cruise, Lieutenant, but your boys just made a round trip. We got everybody now? Yeah, everybody. One up, two below. The girls with me. Okay. You and your friend go back on the launch, and I'll take this bucket back to port. Sure thing. Thanks, Lieutenant. Uh, what's this case all about? Biggest case I ever worked on, Lieutenant. The case of the life or death of Mike Barnett. Mike Barnett, private investigator, duly licensed by the sovereign state of New York. If you tune in on this same channel next week at the same time, you'll see another exciting case reenacted from my private files. Many of the situations have been fictionalized, but what you will witness will be portrayed substantially as it happened and acted on the spot where it happened. You'll witness what occurred in each case when I was assigned to follow that man.